Okay, welcome. We have an interesting meeting tonight because we have the residents of Open Sky House and we have a, a group who are staying in the house this week doing what we call Transformation Week. And then we have various, quite a lot of guests from outside, some of which I think I don't meet you before. So I hope you're going to wave your hand and we have a little chat. If you're new, it's always good to have a chat. And um, we have rather an interesting, unusual meeting tonight. Um, perhaps I'll start by showing you that we're making very good progress with the new book. If you remember those of you in the retreat in Spain recently, I think I was at the end of the retreat saying that I'm going to work on a new volume of Ramana's talks. And so now um, I can say that it's getting very close, maybe 80% edited. Um, beautiful book. So that's rather exciting. Well, it's exciting for me. I don't know if it's exciting for you. I hope it will later be exciting for you too. Yeah. Okay, so let's start with our regular meditation. So if you sit comfortably, it will be about 10, 15 minutes. And when you're ready, you close your eyes, look inside. Okay, so <clears throat> when you're ready, you can open your eyes, come back into the meeting. Okay, so perhaps somebody would like to share what happened in the meditation. If you can if you just wave your oh, my hands on there. <laughs> okay, I'm there again. Okay, so you just move your hand and then we'll arrange the technology. Okay, can I have a volunteer? I'll have to volunteer somebody. It's more fun if I volunteer, if you volunteer. Ah, oh, good old Brett, true, true blue English guy there. Brett, okay. Hello, John. Um, hello, everybody. One, one, one second. Okay, yeah. we got you now. Yeah. Hi, John. Hi, everyone. Um, yeah, very peaceful again today. Um, I've meditated twice today already, so um, I did lunchtime <laughs> meditation, um, and that's my second meditation of the day. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm finding it a lot easier now, um, being able to find that quiet place. Um, and then with your guidance there, I managed to bring myself into even more quiet um, Bhagavan silence, as we like to say. Um, okay. <laughs> And uh, if, if you're interested, we the community meditates every day at 1 30 our time, which is 12 30 your time. Well, that's that is very strange because that is the time that I meditate 12 30 in my lunch half hour. I get every day, okay. so okay. <laughs> per 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 perfect, <laughs> perfect, yeah. yeah. But it's uh, yeah, very peaceful, and, okay. and I'm starting to find those peaceful moments within myself at last um after quite a horrible year that i've had so uh finally looking forward to meeting you all very soon hopefully um in the next month and okay. um i'm looking forward to coming to india with you in january so um good okay to you all. great okay brett so um i go back to the gallery maybe um, you can arrange it that i'm side by side with whoever talks to me um 
Is there another guest who would like to share? Okay, Lisa, very good. I don't hear you, Lisa. Do you have your sound on? Maybe you can help her out. Lisa, Lisa, da müsste eine Meldung auf deinem Bildschirm sein, so ein blauer Button da einfach draufklicken. Jetzt hat ein blauer Button oder irgendwo ein Mikrofonsymbol, wo du klicken kannst und dann du bist am Handy, ne? Klick mal einmal auf den Bildschirm und dann links unten ist so ein Mikrofonsymbol. Ist nichts da? Okay. So, wenn du auf den ja. Bildschirm klickst, links unten so maybe I, I write to her in the chat. Somehow she she can't activate okay. it. Maybe it's okay. Somewhere. Anyway, Lisa, for the moment, we're happy with your beautiful smile. <laughs> and Owen will help you to uh, connect to us with the audio. Yeah. Okay, so somebody else perhaps? Ah, we have we have Kailash. Good. Kailash, every time I see your face, you seem to have changed. <laughs> Thank you. So, um, so this is the third week that I joined this Zoom call, and yeah, uh, I enjoyed this um, opportunity to connect very much. And and also uh, normally uh, Thursdays are a little bit uh, busy for me my day, so when I get to this point in time, it's getting it gets very difficult for me to to control my mind. But when you say go deeper and allow yourself to go deeper, then I start to to be more quiet. Okay. Good. Yeah. Okay, so you, Thursday is a, a busy financial day, is it rushing from one phone call to the next? Yeah, I think most people, you know, have plans already for Friday. So, you know, everyone wants to rush on Thursdays. And somehow there is something to do in the afternoon. So the mind, it just keeps engaged in these thoughts. Right. And and but what I have found is that when I, I allowed myself to go deeper, then something happens. All right. All right. As I say, when I, when I look at your face today, and I remember meeting you some three months ago, maybe um, it feels to me like your face is changing a lot. Are you aware of that? Well, people who are close to you, have they commented maybe? Um, not particularly. They they realize that I don't use my glasses anymore. Um, mm. And mm. yeah, I think there's something going inside of me. Uh, right. Very powerful, right. I believe. Right. Uh, I don't I don't think or I'm not really interested to identify or to find out what is. I just want to live the experience. Right. You don't have to. Yeah. Just interesting for me as outside, yeah. Okay, somebody else who was ah, there's Marco. Good. Marco, if you speak, you, you'll be you on. You can hear screen. me. You can hear me. Yeah, I can hear you, but I yeah. don't see you. Ah, oh, now I see you uh, as well. Yeah. Um, hi, hi, John. Uh, hi, all. Uh, I'm one of the transformers of the volunteers, and I'm here in the uh, Open uh, Sky House since last Monday. And um, as I progressing in the days during this week, 
I feel an enormous power coming up inside my myself, a presence with installing itself. And uh, the thing, the thoughts are already there, but they are much more far away and not so intense like uh, like normally. I'm 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 not so identified with it. It's a little bit like if the, all this energy was would push it away or would uh, would conquer it or, or would would uh, fight with it a little bit. Right. All right. Yeah, well, that's uh, that observation is very interesting. Yeah, that you can see the possibility you carry on doing what you've been doing this week, you just carry that on. And you can imagine over some months that the whole thing will get much quieter. Mm. Just easy, easy, basically, it's easy. Good, good. Okay. Thank you. Okay, Shakti. Okay. Hi. Hi. I'm doing this meditation and right now I feel like being quite deeply somewhere. It feels like there is also some kind of ground, but I'm not sure what what it is and it feels like expanding like horizontally okay i mean i i get the the, the sense that over the last period of time whenever we meditated together you seem to go easily into a quite a deep place so you should give yourself some brownie points for going into a deep place. It seems <laughs> fairly easy for you. Yeah. 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 Good. Nice. Nice. Okay. <clears throat> did, um, did you get Lisa's? Uh, where's Lisa gone? Ah, oh, there's Rishi. Okay, Rishi. I think I haven't met you before, or maybe I have. Hi, John. Nice to see you. The first time, yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. You're f from Holland? No, I um, live in the south of Germany. Ah, okay. Now, okay. yeah, yeah. And uh, what catched me was the topic of the meeting, sex and the self. Right, right. Yeah, it's very... Um, big topic <laughs> <laughs> it's a rather unusual topic for uh, Bhagwan Ramana I can tell you he doesn't normally talk about anything about sex uh, he's not he's not really talking about sex he's talking about the state of no mind in fact but anyway we'll come to that in a minute yeah you've got some beads is that Osho beads sorry uh, around your neck, you're wearing uh, wooden beads. Is that from Osho? Are you from Osho? Uh, yeah, I'm uh, Osho Sanyasin, but it's yeah. uh, not. Uh, it's not the uh, mala. It's another uh, from India. Another. Ah, okay. But you got and, your name from um, Osho, did you? Uh, did you get your name Rishi from? Yeah. Prem Rishi is from okay. in, indirectly from Osho. Yes. Okay. okay. And uh, I used to have I used to have an Osho name. It was Diane David. Diane is meditation. So he gave me this name when I was uh, doing years of meditation. Yeah. Did you and, spend uh, some time in Pune? Yes. Yeah. Recently or some time ago? Uh, it was two years ago. Yeah. Okay, all right. It was six right. months in India. All right. And uh, the topic, uh, it feels, um, it feels like a mouse trap, sex. Yeah. And the self is so, 
um, not to express. And when I'm in this mouse prep, it, it, uh, I feel dense in a way. And uh, for me, I feel it's uh, to balance in, in this human body to live with the forces of the universe. Okay. Anyway, let's leave the topic of uh, sex. I see a picture even of Osha behind you. It's a nice picture you have there. Yeah. Okay, good. Nice to meet you. Nice, nice to meet you. Uh, so, who else would like to? Janine, would you like to say hello? I'm not sure if we met before, but I don't think so. Or maybe we did. Hello. <clears throat> ah. It's working. I can, can hear you, you me now. now? Ah, yes, perfect. Yes. Yeah. Yes, hello, good evening. I think I we met before. I've been I'm the sister of Arjuna. And we talked I'm the sister in, of Arjuna. Ju in June. Yeah, we talked in June already, but yeah, you talked to so many people, so <laughs> All right, yeah, I'm not so good I... on but I remember our <laughs> talk. I don't remember that I remember you as Arjuna's sister. I don't remember your name actually. It's fine. Anyway, you're here anyway, for a few I... more days. Yes, um, I'm here until Saturday. Yeah, with my okay. son, which is sleeping next to me right now. <laughs> okay, I think I didn't meet him before, so maybe I get to meet him this time. Yeah, yeah you can. <laughs> Unfortunately, mm -hmm. I couldn't join the meditation because I had to, yeah, make him fall asleep. But this was also a quite meditative process because, yeah, my nervous system always calms so much down when I try and help him to fall asleep and calm himself down so it was right. also a nice parallel meditation to your meditation <laughs> ah. okay so what what did you experience in this time of being very quiet Tonight? it sounds like it sounds like one part is your baby falls asleep which releases you from being such an intensely busy mummy yeah Absolutely. I think it was a little bit more of self-love today because I tended to judge myself a lot in the last days and I felt a lot of anger and disrespect for myself because sometimes I'm not as calm as I want to be with him or as, yeah, as a wonderful mom as I wish I was in every second. I cannot be. And this sometimes makes me so angry about myself. And I think now that it worked out so well and he felt so calm in my arms, I really felt so much self-love and appreciation also for myself, which I don't feel that often in this process. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, you know, I can share my trade secret about getting kids to sleep. So <laughs> we have dinner together, then they brush their teeth. Then they change into their pajamas. And then the greatest moment of their day, I give them their iPad. And within <laughs> a, they get 20 minutes of iPad cartoons. Then they fall asleep in three minutes. So that's a, okay. <laughs> a very undramatic way to get getting them to sleep. I'm always a bit nervous about the I, iPad, but they love it so much. Uh, yeah. I guess it's okay. Yeah, everything that works out is okay, I think. But Oscar is one year he's old. A, I think the iPad he's is a bit better. Young, young try <laughs> that. <laughs> well, and later on, you can try that. He loves the story of Goodnight Gorilla. And I think I will tell him the story for the next 18 years. <laughs> all right, all right. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. But it sounds as if you have an issue to look at about getting angry with yourself, you know, because you can only be as you are, you know. And if you have some idea that, that I should be like, I don't know, some perfect mother or some perfect human being, I mean, I think that's a very tough kind of judging you're doing on yourself, actually. Because when I met you, it was only a short talk, but when I met you before, you seemed to be amazingly um, 
insightful and aware about life and about yourself and being a doctor and all those things, you know. So I don't think it really helps much to give yourself such a strong kind of inner judgment. You know? Your brother does it the same. You might be interested to know. <laughs> Coincidence. <laughs> Coincidence. Yeah. Might be because you have the same parents, of course. So maybe you <laughs> learn this trick from your parents. Yeah. <laughs> nice to meet you. Yeah. Okay. So. Janet, would you like to say hello? Hi, John. Hi, everybody. Okay. Kannst du mich hören? Yeah, nice to see you. Did we nice. meet before? Sind wir uns schon begegnet? Ja, heute. Yes, today. Ich war, ich bin hier auch eine von den. Oh, von I, see. I see. Janet is Tara. Yes. Uh, <laughs> it's different oh, different name. You become a different Janet person. I, I, I don't recognize you as Tara. Now I recognize andere you. Name, bist du gleich eine andere Person. Ich habe dich nicht als Tara erkannt. Ich bin die gleiche. Yeah. <laughs> I'm the right. same. Right. Okay. So yeah. what, what happened? What happened during the meditation? Was ist während der Meditation passiert? Seitdem ich jetzt zum Beispiel hier bin, ich kann sehr schnell in ein tiefes Gefühl von Nichts reinfallen. Das ist sehr besonders, wo ich wirklich. Since I'm here, ja. I... Yeah. Wir hatten gestern. Since I'm here, I can very easily, quick fall into a um, place of um, nothing, and this is very wonderful. Yeah, especially uh, yesterday, two days ago, we had self inquiry. Das, das hat mich also ganz tief hinter meine um, Überlebensmuster, Patterns gebracht oder hinter den Schmerzkörper. Und dann in dieses tiefe Nichts rein. Also es gelingt mir sehr schnell. So, uh, we had the self-inquiry and it brought me very easily um, beyond my um, um, surviving patterns. Right, right. Yeah, yeah this exercise is, is very wonderful because it, it's taking away the thoughts. And as soon as the thoughts are disappearing, you come into an emptiness or silence, and then you discover that you can feel the effect in the self. Yeah? The self just appears magically. So the self is actually always very close. And if we can stop the volume of constant thinking, then it's possible to live in that space of the self, also, which is very, very wonderful, of course. Sorry, the translation. Um... Die, die Übung ist sehr toll, weil sie einfach die Gedanken äh, wegmacht und dann fällst du einfach in einen, in einen Ort der Stille hinein und ähm, dann kannst du ein, bist du einfach in dem Selbst und dann erscheint das Selbst von allein praktisch. Ja, und ich konnte ganz schnell auch den Unterschied feststellen, sobald ich mich wieder mit meinen Gedanken verbunden habe oder mit meinem Herzschlag. Atem, also das macht einen riesen Unterschied und dieses Fallen in das Nichts hinein, das gibt mir so ein tiefes Gefühl von Stille. And um, yeah, I could uh, really see the difference um, when I went then connected to my thoughts again and um, and to fall into the silence gibt, gives me really um, yeah. Was sagst du Frieden oder? Ganz das tiefen, Gefühl von Frieden. Ja, Stille, ganz tief, ganz tiefes Gefühl von It's Stille. A very deep um, sense of uh, silence. Ja, das gelingt jetzt ganz schnell. Also das ist wirklich wie so, eine, wie so ein Shortcut, seitdem ich dieses Selbst... And goes... No, very quick. It's like a shortcut um, since the self-inquiry. Yeah. Uh, so... so... So when we when we get a good connection to the self, you 
can call it our essence, every human being's essence. This is such a, a beautiful moment that, you know, basically it's worth to get rid of all the thoughts, to throw all the thoughts away, realizing that they're all garbage, even the so-called good thoughts, they're also garbage, throw it all away. And what you get back is the self, which is the most beautiful uh, possibility, because when we're in the self, we feel tremendous joy, we feel peace, everything we actually really desire is just so, uh, given to us immediately. When, um, yeah, when we're in this Selbst fallen, um, then, um, uh, can you repeat? It was a bit too long. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we come to our yeah. essence there, yeah, and then um, um, we throw, all, um, we come to our essence, and we schmeißen the ganzen, the ganzen Gedanken können wir auf den Müll schmeißen, and then sind wir einfach in diesem Selbst, and then kommt Freude, and then kommt Stille und Frieden. And this, this is all kind of automatic once the barrage of thoughts has been kind of calmed down, then all these nice things are automatic. Und das passiert automatisch, wenn so die ganze Ladung der um, um, Gedanken einfach zu, zur Ruhe kommen. Dann passiert das automatisch. Der Erinnerung jetzt, als du immer noch mal zwischendurch gesagt hast, um verbinde dich mit dem, was gerade jetzt am stärksten da ist. Und das ist einfach richtig genial zu, zu erfahren, wie, wie schnell kann ich ähm, diesen Zustand ändern. Das ist sehr powerful für mich. It was a, remind it was a reminder when you said, um, um, if you focus on what is the strongest right now. And then I came very quickly to the space and it is... Um, very powerful for me good yeah okay so this is perhaps the most important experience you'll have this week that just by getting rid of all these ridiculous thoughts which have been showing up in our life maybe for most of our life and not really helping and not really contributing when we get rid of all this stuff then the present we get is the present we would like to get. So, it's wahrscheinlich die yeah. wichtigste Erfahrung von dieser Woche für dich, ne? wenn wir halt eben all diese Gedanken, die wir über, die, über das Leben hin angesammelt haben, das war die krasseste Erfahrung. Werden, dann werden wir einfach sind. Also, this yes, this was the strongest experience. Experience for me, yeah. Okay. Weil ich da so ich habe da sehen können, im Kontakt mit dem anderen, meine ganzen Identifikationen, alle. Und hinter diesen Identifikationen kamen noch Schmerzkörper und dahinter kam nichts mehr. So I could see in, 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 in being with this partner um, that um, all the identification I could see and I could see the pain body. Right, right. And, and then I, we have to we that, have to see yeah, there was nothing. how amazingly identified we are with that. Yeah, and we must see how we are unglaublich mit identified. sind. We're so identified that you know it's very difficult to imagine even that you could just throw it all away. All those thoughts in the garbage. They seem so damit. important. Wir sind so damit identifiziert, dass wir gar nicht auf die Idee kommen würden, dass wir nicht sehen können, weil das ist einfach äh, in den Müll schmeißen können. Sie sehen so, so wichtig aus. Sie scheinen so wichtig. Okay, so uh, maybe one more person. What happened to Vielleicht noch Lisa? eine Person. Was ist mit Lisa or... passiert? We were trying to help her. Did we get through? Oh, did you help her? Haben wir das... Uh... I can, I can, can you hear I me? Can he yes, yes. Is that Lisa? Yes. That Lisa? Okay. Yeah. Okay, good. Okay, now we hear you very well. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> so I was meditating on a feeling. I felt my strongest feeling was a connection to all of you. So I feel very connected. And um, 
but at the same time had so many thoughts coming and wanted they always try to disconnect me like so it's like okay but you're sitting here alone you are alone in your apartment so um i was always trying to focus on the feeling but i really had strong thoughts coming all the time wanted to destroy this strong nice feeling yeah right have you been doing a regular meditation yes i'm, I'm meditating in a regular ways sometimes just on my breathing but so, at the moment, a lot guided meditation where I, at the moment, the last meditation I did, I met my grandmother who died. So stuff like this, yeah. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because you've got the kind of smiling face, which is a kind of symptom of meditation. It was the connection with all of you, yes. <laughs> right now. <laughs> <laughs> You know, most most Buddha statues, if you look at them carefully, they have a kind of Mona Lisa smile on the statue. Have you noticed this? This is the result of years of meditation. Yeah. And uh, in, in a way, you can say this is the face of the self. So this this thing which in India is called the self, um, in 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 the West, we might call it our intuition or our being or maybe our essence. Um, this place has a smile attached to it. Yeah. Yeah. But in interesting that... anyway that my thoughts coming and want to disconnect me again. Yeah. 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 This is the problem with thoughts. Yeah. They always want to come and into interfere and we usually invite them to come you know because we're somehow so familiar with these old thoughts that we when they come we kind of in one way welcome them even if we know deep down they're not really helping us we still kind of welcome them so this is a big job to change we have to change this kind of endless invitation of thoughts Yes. Yeah. Good. And do you live in Germany? Yes, I'm living in Dusseldorf. Dusseldorf. Oh, that's really a long way away. In fact, I was even in Dusseldorf today. My doctor's in Dusseldorf. Yeah. yeah. So I've been to your Ashram in Leverkusen for a weekend as a hotel guest. And then I was, but years ago, and I was, um, a few months ago, I was also on a Tantra one day seminar with Rado. Ah, okay, good, good. Yeah. Okay, nice to meet you. Yeah, nice to meet you too, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so maybe we've got to the moment where I'm going to read out this very controversial text tonight. <laughs> so I, get, I gave the title of this text as Sex and the Self, which got Rishi on board tonight, you see. It's a very unusual text, and it, when I first came across this text, I was wondering if it was really from Ramana. But after I edited, or when I was editing it, somehow it's got the same uh, structure as his other text. So the question was, it cannot be denied that it is sexual desire that causes man to engage in kotos, even when reproduction is not the motive. Bagwan, you ask about biological sexual urge. That is impregnated in the ego mind body complex to facilitate reproduction according to nature's design. If the act did not involve pleasure, man would likely ask, why should I give birth to children? What is the highest joy man can know? It is the state of no mind. Daily he experiences it in sleep. 
Only the yogi has experience of it in waking. For the yani, there can be no question of experiencing anything. So nature has seen fit to introduce this bliss of no mind into the sexual act. A moment before the commencement of the spasms that bring about emission of the seminal fluid for precisely one over 128th of a second. I don't know where he gets this number from because I don't think he was really an expert on sex. The mind is removed. It is like a plate being exposed with a very quick shutter speed. The impression of the bliss tasted leaves behind a strong craving for more such bliss in the mind. This is how men end up addicted to the sexual act. So this is, I think, very, very beautiful, very, very clever, actually, what he's telling. And many years ago, when I was sitting every morning with Osho, he was um, asked um, somehow a very similar question. And he was explaining that probably, according to him, meditation started again out of this sexual act. Because um, the reality is that there is a small moment. I never checked if it was one hundredth of twenty eighth of a second. But there is a moment when the mind stops. It's just a short moment, the mind stops. And then when the mind stops, there is immediately this beautiful moment of the self. So we get a very nice feeling. And being a man, I can say that over my life, this, this feeling has attracted me to uh, practice quite a lot. So I had to find a nice lady and then we played around and then we practiced a bit. And always there's this beautiful moment when the thoughts disappear. So I'm, I think many people know, know this space. And according to Ramana, this is probably one of the reasons why some people become completely obsessed with sex because they have no ability to meditate. They have no ability to remove the thoughts. And indeed, most people, of course, are absolutely identified to the thoughts. It doesn't even occur to them that they want to remove the thoughts for their whole life. So the people who, who in fact, discover meditation and discover the possibility of no mind, you anyway know this space, this bliss. He says here, so nature has seen fit to introduce this bliss of no mind. So this is, this is nothing really about sex. It's about coming to the state of no mind. And I think a couple of people were saying that earlier this week, they practice self-inquiry. This is where we sit together and we ask our partner, who are you? And in the beginning of the exercise, most people have lots to say about who they think they are. But gradually, gradually over a period of time, you, it's difficult to hold on to that identity. And gradually, gradually, over some hours, you slip into silence. And very often when we, in the retreats, I nearly always do this for some hours. In the transformation week, I think it's only a couple of hours in the evening. So um, this is a very powerful exercise because it gives us a taste of something that normally we're not very familiar with. And it seems to me, once you have a taste of something like no mind, then this gives you a very strong support 
to continue with meditation. Would anybody like to um, respond to this text? Maybe I read it one more time. So maybe we go, through, there are three paragraphs. We go through each paragraph maybe. So the first question was, it cannot be denied that it is sexual desire that causes man to engage in cultus, even when reproduction is not the motive. Bad one. You ask about the biological sexual urge that is impregnated in the ego mind body complex to facilitate reproduction according to nature's design if the act did not involve pleasure man would likely ask why should i give birth to children so i mean it seems to me that what he's saying is completely obvious that our natural biological functioning needs to create children in order for us to be to leave and for others to arrive and this is the constant circulation of humanity and in order to to have that working this act between a man and a woman should be pleasurable because of course if it wasn't pleasurable we probably wouldn't do it so how to make it pleasurable. What is the highest joy man can know? It is the state of no mind. Ah, so you see, existence decided we'll put a little moment of no mind into the sexual act because everybody will enjoy that moment and that will encourage them to keep doing it. Very clever of nature, you see. Nature is very clever. So nature has seen fit to introduce this bliss of no mind into the sexual act. You see, that's the second paragraph. And the third, a moment before the commencement of the spasms that bring about emission of the seminal fluid for precisely a tiny fraction of a second, the mind is removed. It's like a plate being exposed with a very quick shutter speed. The impression of the bliss tasted leaves behind a strong craving for more such bliss in the mind. This is how men end up addicted to the act. So would somebody like to uh, respond to that? <coughs> yeah, um, first of all, uh, I would like to confirm uh, this experience from myself, uh, from my practice when you when you would uh, tell uh, tell it like this. Uh, and um, um, in fact, so you've, ex um, you've experienced, Marco, you've experienced this moment of pleasure, have you? Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I have experienced a lot of times, and even I felt uh, uh, when, uh, uh, for example, having sex with a woman, uh, this is the only room where men and women can be together in one un unified state, you know. And uh, right. such so, so, so that's my experience of 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 this. Uh, I'm a little bit uh, astonished about Ramana talking about this subject because I uh, I didn't thought he's very he had uh, very uh, much uh, sexual experiences, but uh, uh, it seems that he uh, does know what it is at least. And this is a second idea that I have. I know, understand so it's a big uh, business of porn industry in in the whole world. When you see, uh, you know, every the porn industry is very is very big, even with these digital uh, uh, devices we all have. And you see, the, the addiction to have this feeling of the self is is creating an enormous. Uh, stuff of uh, animal behavior 
of of retrying to 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 uh, to 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 someone else to 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 the person uh, uh, on his own and uh, not to be in a relationship you know what i mean yeah i mean i mean of course this addiction to watching porno and maybe as you watch playing with yourself and then having this moment of no mind and therefore feeling some kind of moment of pleasure of course is very sad because yeah. what you were saying before about sharing that with a close partner being able to share that space you know i mean men and women have many ways of of sharing of course but maybe the most intimate way to to share is to share this moment and to be able to be in no mind together this is actually very unusual um, in my life i perhaps was lucky or not i don't know i had some very nice uh, relationships for quite a, quite many years i also had some less long lasting relationships and um the uh, the number of of people i could meet the number of women i could meet and as you know i'm now 80 so i've had about uh, well 55 years of or fifth, maybe 60 years of, of of sharing this and i can count on one finger the number of women i could meet or find who could share this deep moment of no mind mm -hmm. So this is another level of, of meeting between a man and a woman. And is, mm. from my own experience, very, very rare, actually. Okay. So I would say this is much more attractive than uh, any kind of porno, uh, how can I say, porno excitement could possibly offer. Strangely, the most beautiful thing I've experienced with any woman is to go to this moment of no mind and share that together. Yeah. But, but, but for this, you have to allow yourself the closeness to, to, to uh, the both have to be open, open and open, open up all the time to come to the state. Otherwise, it's, it's just an, uh, a rhythmic uh, phenomenon. What is not what not has to do something to do with love? Well, the first thing that has to happen, of course, is you have to go into no mind. Yeah. So the reason why this is very, very rare is that actually you, it, you have first you have to become enlightened if you want to call it enlightened. And then you have to meet a woman or a man who is also enlightened. And then it's anyway rather unlikely if you're really enlightened, because then it's so nice you don't really care about one hundredth of the 28 seconds blah 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 because you know in the daily life you have this space anyway mm. yeah anyway so uh yeah it's a bit unusual subject tonight yeah mm. good okay i'm sure somebody else would like to share about this yes Fida is raising his hand Rishi, Rishi, maybe Rishi first. I saw your hand. Maybe first Rishi. Yeah, do you hear me? Yes, yes. Yes, great. Um, you might I'm be interested. interested. I'm interested in the question, in the question. Um, what do you think about discrimination between uh, between ejaculation and uh, orgasm? What, what, say it again. What? 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 To the discard ejaculation um, to orgasm. So, okay. In my case, in my case, I'm addicted, but I don't ejaculate. It's I call it uh, <laughs> since. I don't watch porn, yeah, and since I can um, think it's a kind of uh, survival strategy to misuse this body in this way. So, All right. and uh, my question is uh, when I don't have the air collation and I feel this 
orgasm thing, but mind comes back. Also, can I uh, find uh, freedom during or, or, or through this or no? Well, it's interesting. I didn't. I didn't decide to use um, the rest of the text. There's more to this text. So you have to buy the book later, in a few months time, we hope by the new year, we'll have the book, then you can read the rest of this dialogue. Because um, uh, the, the dialogue continues now, I'm, I'm just trying to remember what it what it was. Oh. Uh, I, I'm sorry, I, something you said reminded me, but now I've lost it. I can't really remember. But but anyway, the, the text continues. This is not the whole text on this subject. Yeah. But I think I think um, he's not in any way discussing this or that sexual behavior because for sure he doesn't have much experience of sexual behavior, I would guess. I mean, there's no no sense that he was in any way active, that he was in any way in an intimate thing with anybody. So whether he was or not, I don't know, but I don't think so. I, my own impression is very unlikely. So he wasn't really interested to talk in any detail about sex. But if, for example, what you're describing happens for you, and out of that, just for a moment, your thoughts stop, and just for a moment, you feel this um, joy of no mind, then whether whether you um, ejaculate or you don't is, oh, I remember now, ha, ha, ha. I remember now what he was talking about. He was saying, somebody also asked him another question about whether tantra, spiritual tantra uh, is another way to come to the self, yeah? And he was saying, he was laughing a bit, and he was saying, yes, well, um, these people who, who are trying to come to the self through Tantra, they, um, they keep practicing more and more, he was saying, in, in a way, making a joke, you know, practicing more and more. Um, so probably he wouldn't, wouldn't suggest to anybody that you can come to the self through one of the Tantra kind of uh, practices, you know, Tantra practices. But I have met people along the way of my life who are very busy with this idea that I can come to the self through uh, Tantra practices. Um, so reasonably common. And in fact, the Tibetans, they have a teaching based on Tantra. But I think they don't advertise it very much. It's, it's something they keep a bit quiet because in the modern world where we live, anything to do with sex immediately gets misunderstood, you could say. So nobody's going to talk about sex in the context of the self, except maybe Ramana Mahashi. So I found this text kind of interesting, actually. But the, the interest is not about the sex, it's the interest is about coming to the self. And you come to the no mind, then you don't need to watch porno movies because you're having a good time by yourself coming to the self. It's the same thing as, as romantic love, you know? I'm living near two big motorways, in fact, the biggest one in Germany, and come Friday night or Saturday night, there are thousands of people rushing up and down this motorway. And I always say they're looking for love, you know, they're looking for romantic love. And they're hoping that if they're lucky to find somebody, then that person will bring them endless love, endless love, endlessly feeling this no mind state. But this is a bit sad because my, uh, experience of my life shows me that this is uh, not really lasting very long. It's a kind of illusion, you know, that if you marry somebody, you're going to be saved and you're going to be loved forever and ever. It's a nice little kind of fairy tale. And uh, of course, we have the capacity within ourselves 
to bring ourselves through spiritual practice to this state of no mind. We, we, can, we can manage it. Yes, and we have this body, and this body, um, the sexual energy, or shall I say it's a, it's a life energy. And yeah, yeah, somehow yeah, this to, it's clear to that the sexual energy for, is a life energy. Yeah. To use for higher, um, yeah, to, to, to come closer to the self, yeah? to, to be that self, because that's, that's the truth, yeah. We are that, right? I mean, you have this name Rishi. I remember when Osha was talking about, um, you know, there was a period in India where there was a group of people called Rishi, the Rishis. And these people were very spiritually advanced. I don't know exactly when they were living, two, two or 3,000 years ago, a long time ago. And Osha was talking about the fact that they discovered meditation. And how did they discover meditation? He's actually saying, was saying the same. They discovered meditation in the sex act, because in the sex act, as Ramana is also saying, um, there is this moment when the thoughts stop, no mind. And so they discovered meditation through no mind. And then they had the idea, well, if we meditate longer and our thoughts get less and less, we can come to no mind through meditation. And there are other techniques, of course, there are breathing techniques where again, you can come to no mind. So these different spiritual practices um, somehow came out of the discovery by the rishis um, of um, the fact that, um, you know, that we can come to no mind through practice, not just through the sexual connection. Yeah, I um, practice um, very intensely the quantum light breathing meditation from Yiru Kaba. Okay. And it's uh, every mo morning and every uh, before I go sleep. And uh, yeah. Okay, I don't know that meditation, but do you mm -hmm. invest? Have you got to the point where you investigate the eye? Or do yes. you accept that you're this person called I? Because Ramana Mahashi has this teaching, which is called, who am I? Yes. And you investigate this I. Have you come across this? I investigate now. There's no I. Okay. Good. So you're getting a benefit from your practices. Uh, good. Okay. Do we have somebody else who would like to Thank talk you. about this text? Sida is raising his hand. Who is? Hello. One minute. Can you put your hand again? Because I. Ah, okay. Siddha. Okay, Siddha. Hello. Hello, hello. You were speaking about in your experience when you met people with no mind, that there are very less people like that. So I reflected on that and um i've also met very less people like that and at some point i got very uninterested you can say in searching for that kind of thing so my question would be when i am uninterested all of a sudden, there's some attraction. I don't know what what, what to call it, but some mm -hmm. a magnet that is pulling towards me. Right, right. Well, you've um, chosen to come here, for example, this week. So, I mean, 
you could one could argue that every human being I, well, I don't know if it was you i think it was somebody else asking if there's any point to life you know in the afternoon that was and was that you no that was the berlin guy not of uh okay so anyway whoever asked i mean this question of a point you know i mean the the, the greatest point is to come in a way to the soul become become self-realized self-realized is a more comfortable expression than enlightenment i think because enlightenment suggests that you know you're going along and then one day there may be a kind of uh, a special moment and in that moment you know there's a special thing happens and then forever and ever you change and i don't really see it like that from my own experience and i more i'm personally more comfortable with self-realized so you, 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 we all have moments when we experience the self. These are not usually very long. They're usually very, very short because we have such a power of, of thoughts coming in the mind that there isn't that many moments when it's completely quiet. So usually we experience the self for not very long, but there are cases we have several people in our community who've experienced it for hours or even days. So either, either way, a, a glimpse of something that you didn't know before, which you now suddenly experience and you experience in a way which was very beautiful. It was beyond your experience of life before, maybe. If you think of chocolate, you know, there are shops that specialize only in selling chocolate, small chocolate, big chocolate, with peppermint, with, you know, all kinds of tastes of chocolate. Yeah. Just imagine if you had never tasted a piece of chocolate. Yeah. So you would go past the chocolate shop and you would look in the window and you see some sort of brown stuff and maybe it doesn't look very exciting. So you just leave it and pass on down the street. Yeah. But as soon as you've tasted one piece of chocolate, it's like something changes in your life. Yeah. And you know now that the chocolate shop is a place which is always nice to visit. So I think it's a little bit like that with the self. You know, once one's had an experience of the self, this is for most people, this is the, the, the highest experience in their life, the highest experience in their life. And uh, it's a rare experience. And I've met many people coming to uh, my meetings, uh, telling me that, you know, 15 years ago, 10 years ago, suddenly one day they had this experience, maybe they were walking in a supermarket, or maybe they were sitting in meditation at home, but very unexpectedly, they suddenly felt, wow, wow. And they felt in that moment better than they'd ever <laughs> felt before. You see. So when I tell you like that, maybe you're going to pop across and get some chocolate. You see, I I think I already did pop some okay. chocolate. Okay, right. So you know chocolate, you know the soul. Of and course. Therefore, you've decided to come to this week here, and you're hope is that being here for a week will give you some new uh, impetus to to go for the self you know because this is this is a, a very reasonable point of our life actually yeah and there's one more thing i would like to ask um so whenever there is the urge from my body physically for the sexual act but I'm let's say emotionally or my being is not really interested in it in the nights I will get um, nocturnal emissions or in other words wet dreams and I, I don't know with what it is connecting and also I'm very bad being aware in, in the sleep. I don't know what happens in my sleep. I'm just lost, absolutely lost. Right, right, yeah. 
Yeah, well, I mean, I, I mean, wet dreams seem to be the result of not actually having sex. So the energy that inside your body is there, and it ends up that you get an emission during the night when you're sleeping. And you know about it in the morning, but it's not a big deal. I think once it's happened a few times as a teenager, then it's not really an issue anymore. You know? So um, what is beautiful is that every night we, we lie down, we close our eyes and we fall into a sleep. And initially this sleep maybe is not so deep. And so we have some kind of, um, the mind is still functioning. And so we get some dreams, you know, we, we go on an adventure or something and it feels very real when it's happening and uh, i can remember one time I, I, it happened to me on a train i was lying on the upper berth and i was having this dream and in this dream suddenly i was attacked by i think it was a tiger and you know it was such a strong dream and i was very much you know in this dream that apparently I must have jumped away from the tiger, but unfortunately I landed on the floor of the train and I was kind of fairly badly wounded. I broke anyway, one or two ribs. So they had to stop the train at the next station and the doctor had to come on to check me. But as soon as she saw that I wasn't wearing knickers, she said, I can't treat you. So it was all like a bit, bit of a joke, actually. But I mean, I haven't forgotten that dream because it was such a powerful dream that I jumped off the upper berth onto the floor of the train and hurt myself. So um, dreams are rather common, I, I, I would say. And um, after this initial period of light sleeping and dreaming, we go into a deep sleep. So maybe for six hours every night, we go into a very, very deep sleep where, as you say, you have no memory of what, what happened. There's no longer any dreams. There's just nothing. So this is a taste of no mind. Unfortunately, there's nobody around to taste it, but actually every night you fall into no mind for some hours. And very often when we wake up in the morning, there is a sort of nice feeling around maybe maybe we feel energized maybe we feel calmer um, different kind of fairly positive aspects that come out of six hours of sleep so then you know then we wake up and then the mind gets active again yeah so during during the deep sleep every night we're actually if you like uh hanging in no mind there are no thoughts and the moment the dreams come how get a do how do i get aware of that like how to get aware that i'm dreaming well i think uh, if if you have self-awareness in your everyday life through meditation it may be you can be uh, sleeping lightly and being aware that you know there is a dream happening in my case i don't dream very often but occasionally i dream and then usually i don't wait for the tiger to wake me up but i become somehow aware of the dream one of my favorite dreams is trying to get to the airport on time uh, because i have i have managed to miss a few planes in my life so it seems that I have um, um, I have the need in my dreams to try to figure out how to be on the airport in time to catch the plane. And <laughs> this, de depending where I start, you know, I could be starting in some village in India, and then it seems almost impossible that I'll get the plane. Sometimes I'm going to go on a train, and then I'm, you know, it's question is whether I miss the train, which will get me to the airport on time. So this is one of my common dreams that comes up, yeah. And usually I wake up, um, you know, before I find out if I'm going to get the plane or not. So 
Um, I don't quite know why I wake up so early in the in the story. Mm. Okay. All right. Okay. Let's see if anybody else likes to. Maybe we have a female who would like to talk about this subject. <laughs> Is there any females who would like to jump into this topic? Remember, it's not really about the moment of orgasm. It's really about the self. Oh, girls want to try it out? Maybe I'll choose a girl. Well, we have a tantra teacher. Where's she gone? I don't see her. On there. Is Rada still there? Ah, there you are. Do you like to have a go at this subject? Uh, to the orgasm or to the self? <laughs> <laughs> Bit of both, maybe. <laughs> I mean, I'd like, I'd like, to, of course, I would like to be able to support your tantra workshops by get, telling everybody that you know, if they come to Radha's tantra, they will, of course, get a new, a new spiritual practice, and this can be, you know, that can be all you need. But I find myself limited. But that well, maybe the, the Tantra workshop is um, when we're talking about orgasm and self, a bit more focused coming to the self. Because um, basically it's like a slowdown that you can really become present in any moment. Yeah. And without touching anything, so welcoming everything what's arising in every moment and so from maybe being in the mind going more down to your heart and to the self yeah i mean i like it that you call your tantra um to do with touch you know tantra touch because once you start touching, then it takes you actually into the possibility of meeting the self, I would say. And, you know, most people who teach Tantra, they somehow in the West make Tantra into some kind of spiritual sex or something. But actually, Tantra is not really spiritual sex. Tantra is, is a deep yes to life in the, the smell of life, the, the, the view of life, the touch of life, the, all, all the possibilities of our life as a human being, uh, where we celebrate with a big yes, that's tantrum. For me, that's tantrum. It's not really about sex. So through touch, uh, when, when people start in your workshops in touch, I'm sure a lot of them end up going into a very deep space, actually. Is that right? Yeah, but yeah, but a conscious touch. Yeah. yeah. And and not I mean, I think it's more about being than doing. Um, um yeah. Being being in the moment, in the touch, the present in the touch you're receiving press and the touch you're giving and um and not reaching somewhere like in this what we do when we are more in the doing right yeah, right. yeah i mean what i can say to people who haven't been to one of uh, rather's uh, days or weekends <clears throat> i would strongly recommend it because you'll find that what she's encouraging you to experience through touch, giving touch or receiving touch is actually a very beautiful way that leads to the self. And I think in your workshops, you know, at the end of the workshop, people are very, very empty, you could say. Maybe not mm. completely empty, but they're mm. considerably emptier than when they came in the beginning. Mm. And mm. so people have actually big, 
big experiences from your workshops. Mm. Yeah, and this is, I mean, I always find it very beautiful, yeah, what happens in a, in this period, yeah, in this, this time of the workshop, what changes in the people, yeah. Yeah. For, for example, people who maybe were a bit scary to take off their clothes or take off some of their clothes, they, when they've actually done it, and then they forget they've done it and they just carry on with whatever the exercise touching or whatever. Then in the end, they realize that actually it's very nice not to be wearing clothes. And once you drop any ideas you have about what it means to take off your clothes, then it brings you into a very natural state, actually. So, um, yeah, anyway. We're a little off the point, actually, because mm. maybe I should go back to this, this, this. Anybody else like to um, jump in? Okay. I think we had, there was somebody, there was another man, I have lost him. Was it Kim? Okay, go ahead. Yeah, so um, I, I actually uh, have, I'm here also part of the Transformation Week currently, right? Right. And um, I had my uh, second uh, self inquiry uh, uh, on Sunday. And uh, it was very, very different than the first time. Because um, uh, even though uh, I got a lot more quiet, um, I would not say that I would be able uh, that I would have been able to to find the self. But the answers which came up were uh, a lot uh, rare or becoming rare, but they're also becoming very 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 touchy so i cried a lot in that meeting and um, uh, it was very intense for me but uh, um, after what after that and, and and that is not about the self i think i think this is about the eye so but i appreciated these answers because uh who am i it's not who um, self, it's who am I, uh, at least in my current state. So my question is, I think it's valuable to get information about the I, not only about the self, right? So because it's, well, it's getting lighter. I think I you, think you have, most people have piles of information about the, the, the I, you know? You have a whole story about who you are, it's all from the I, you know? And this has been created for you by uh, your parents, by your brother, your sister, your friends, by the teacher. All these people in the society together have encouraged you to know a lot about some identification. But what, what Ramana is saying, what John David will say, is that unfortunately this is not true that all that construction, which I call I, is in fact an illusion. It's a complete illusion. It's not real. What is real is the self. So right. I don't think we want more information about the I. We want to have more experience of the self. Because when you have more experience of the self, which is can be deeply touching, then you don't really want to hold on to getting more information about the eye. You see that with the eye, the thing to do is we just want to get rid of it. Completely I mean, finished. No mind. I wouldn't, and, I wouldn't say that. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, I mean, my, my slight problem with you is not that you talk a lot, but you're very identified with talking a lot and being this person that you talk from. And now you're admitting 
what I would consider to be a completely false position that you actually are actively wanting to know more about your ego. And I've had other students like that, you know, who don't basically don't agree with what I'm saying and actually are wanting to investigate a lot of energy into knowing more about their ego and their identifications. So that's okay. Everybody can choose that, but that's completely opposite to what I'm trying to teach and what I'm trying to share. So, I mean, I think you, you need to understand that at the moment, I don't really see you as my student because actually what you express is the opposite. Mm. And I understand that because that was my question and, and uh, you gave me an answer. So my follow-up question would, would be, but at, at least I feel lighter. So discovering that, because I, I had the impression that I somehow didn't know about that part of my ego, and now I know, and by knowing it, I can get rid of it because isn't that the case that this at least uncovers a little bit so that I get closer to myself. Yeah, well, I hope that's what, what we're offering in this transformation week, you know, that that um, we're trying to show people that what most people, most human beings believe, you're not different from most people. You're, you're, you're in the majority, you know, I can say at least 99% of humanity agree with your position. And only very, very few uh, are interested in investigating and coming to no mind. That's not an attractive offer anywhere. You see, very few people are interested in that. Like tonight, we have about 30 people in this Zoom meeting, which is actually uh, quite good. You know, there, there are not 3000 people that want to come into this meeting. So this is not a, a particularly interesting topic for most people. So from the experience I have from the transformation week, I'm definitely interested to, to, to get to know myself because it seems to help a lot to me personally, right? It's just, um, maybe, it, um, yeah, a, a different experience, which I have, I, I don't feel it yet. I, uh, yeah, and I, or I feel it now less, but before, when, when I got that thought within the self-inquiry where it was so touching and I cried, that, that was not the self I felt. I, 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 I don't know. I don't know. Maybe, um, I don't know. <laughs> okay. Well, I think don't know is a good position, you know, because I would say when I first met you, your energy was like, I know. I know. And now you're saying now I'm not sure if I know or I don't know. So that's progress, I would say. And there's another one step, which is to realize that um, if you would come to know mine, that would be the most beautiful way to live your life now. And if you can manage that in the last part of this week, that would be a very good result, I would say. And I appreciate you coming here, you know, so let's see what happens. Thank you. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> okay. Is so red again? Where is he? I can't see him. Ah, oh, here he is. Good. Hi. Go ahead, Brett. Hi, John. Um, I just want to sort of like clarify something with you, if I may. Um, a lot of Bhagavan's teachings are about the subject. The subject being the uh, <clears throat> investigating the subject yeah. and the I and returning the I to its source. And right. I'm just wondering when we're talking about sex, is sex not an object? Is that are we having to go through the object to reach the subject? Well, I, I, I mean, I, I think what, what he's saying in this text is a bit more simple, you know, he's not really getting into talking about sex in the way that you've just spoken about it. 
he's he's saying that nature has given us a little taste of something that's very very nice in order to encourage the human race to continue to create uh, you know new human beings and he's making this point that it's the fact we come to know mind is the fact we come to the self that makes it so enjoyable and can even lead us to become a bit addicted to act you know hmm. I, I understand that, but I'm, I'm just a little bit confused as to, you know, from what I've read and obviously um, I know that there's a lot of focus on the subject to return that eye to its source, which is how we, we want to try and find the self. Well, that, it's, not, it's not really about returning the eye to the source. It's about completely demolishing the eye. So there is no eye. Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah. So it's not, it's, you know, the self is the self, the I is the I. We're very identified to this I. Mm -hmm. And by, be, by being so identified to the I, we prevent ourselves um, being intimate to the self. So you can see it as a kind of screen. Mm -hmm. And as this screen becomes thinner and thinner and thinner, mm -hmm. and even starts having gaps, so we can have thoughts with quite big gaps in between. Mm. And in those gaps, we suddenly get a direct contact to the self. And um, when we do this exercise, uh, you know, we call it who, who am I? Um, usually people have very beautiful moments which they've never experienced before. Mm. This is uh, pretty common. But we do it for a whole day in a retreat, not just uh, for a couple of hours, as we do in this transformation week. So if you mm. come with us to India, there'll be a day at the beginning of the retreat. And at the end of the first day or the second day, I always do it at the beginning of the retreat so that I can get rid of as much mind in one day as I possibly can. So, so then the retreat kind of calms down after that day um and um we're not so caught up in the personal uh identifications of the mm. people in the retreat you know the common language starts to be the self rather than uh the identifications that everybody has yeah yeah and this is this is the difference between a spiritual teacher and a therapist you know, yeah. So a good therapist will have some spiritual understanding, but he gives a space to deal with whatever the issues are. You know, in the story, in my story, I come along to the therapist with certain certain stories which I'd like him to help me with. Yeah. You know? mm. But the spiritual teacher is not much interested in all those stories. His attitude is drop it all and become. No, in no mind or become empty. Yeah, I think you, you, you're correct in the way because obviously I've, I've had therapists myself, and it's uh, they try to adjust things. You, they try to adjust your eye to a certain way of yeah. they think is correct. If you know what I mean, not that they do. They do. There's a lot of good therapists out there, but there are certain ones who will try well, to they, adjust they, the they, eye. They want to make you a better functioning member of society. So they have mm. an idea what that would be. So if inside you, you know, you have some anger and this anger doesn't go away very easily, you hold on to it for days on end, and then you can easily scream at people and be rather unpleasant. Then when you come to the therapist with that story, he um, doesn't tell you what I would tell you. He says, okay, let's investigate this. You know, when did you, when yeah. did, what, what's behind this anger? You know, when you were a little kid, did something happen? Was there a trauma? Was there, you know, common situation in your family which brought this anger out? Blah, blah, blah. So he's not denying your story. He's, he's investigating your story with you, which has a value, actually. I mean, mm. uh, w w for example, in our community, we, we work with two different Osho centers where they have very good therapists. And 
according to a certain situation, I would advise somebody to do a weekend or to do a one week uh, seminar in one of those two places, because the Osho therapists tend to be um, having a much wider understanding of human beings than a therapist trained as purely a psychological, in a psychological way. So yeah, that's my advice usually, but yeah. Well, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to the, I'm looking forward to coming to India with you. I really am. I'm going to, I'm, I'm very excited. <laughs> uh, I'm looking forward to it. All right. Well, this Thank retreat, you. this retreat is, uh, is rather special because over the many years I've been offering this, I think we're up to about 21 years now, every year I've offered this retreat in the same small ashram near Ramana's ashram, you know, 10 minute walk. And in, in those years, I've become close to two women and two men um, who are spiritual Indian spiritual teachers. Mm. And um, yeah, I mean, I think they're both quite incredible. They're all quite incredible people. And um, usually we get to meet them and we can either go to their ashram or they come to, to our ashram. And often there's also some Western teachers around town, and I I invite them also to come. So we, we... Um, I was going to ask you, John, actually, because because you know David Godman, don't you? Well, I know David Godman, but we're completely not in on speaking terms. Oh, okay. Yeah, he doesn't like me. Oh. Yeah. I mean, if you if if you're friends with him, I mean, you can ask him why he doesn't like me, but um, he doesn't like me. No, I'm not friends with him. I just um, I read I read a couple of his books. That's all. Yeah, he writes very good books. Yeah, mm. yeah. He wrote very good ones about Papaji, Anamalai, Ramana. Um, he got some of of, of uh, Mugana's poems. He got them translated, so that's also one. He's done a wonderful job, actually, with these books. And um, in fact, early in my career in, in that town, he gave me three interviews, okay? One was about Ramana's life, one was about his disciples' life, and one was about Ramana's teachings. So three interviews, which we filmed. And, and out of that, we made a book, you may have seen it, um, Aranachala Shiva it's called, yeah. um, where his interviews are in the book. And also we made a film to go with the book. So there's uh, some of his best, um, uh, how can I say, his, his best uh, memories of Ramana, because he's really very experienced. He's been there for many years, maybe 45 years now, I think, living there. Mm. Yeah. Thank you. Anyway, yeah, good. So maybe we have time for one more person. Anybody else feel a bit provoked? Maybe another man. Have we got any men who would like to come into this subject? Okay, where is Kieran? I can't see him. Kieran, would you like to comment on the text for tonight? <laughs> um. Do you agree with what Ramana is saying? I think it's, is that it's your a bit own more, experience. Yes, I think it's what? a bit more than one uh, one hundred twenty-eight. It's a it's a bit a bit longer. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And uh, yeah, it's it's very sen very very sensible what what he says because um, in sex you you lose your mind at least for a very short time and then you want yeah you want to do it again but for example um in um in india 
there, there, there's there's a big difference from from my like sexual desire or dreams or something like this yeah in india i never had this when we are in india uh, this i'm completely uh yeah there is there's no no thought no desire no um uh, about sex you know um and there's much yeah much more depth in uh much more i feel much more close to i don't know emptiness or to to dealing inside and, well i think uh, that's that yeah. what you're saying is is the reason we go every year to india you know here we are we've been i mean you probably come to india with me 10 times already i mean mm. so that why we go to india is because there is an ambiance in that culture which is very very different from western culture i mean i guess middle class indians also watch porno movies but I should imagine much less than the middle class men do in, in Europe or North America, you know, because there's another another whole possibility that comes up in India, which is that you can much more directly simply be accepted by the other people for being quiet and falling into the cell. People immediately respond to that, whereas in Europe, they don't even know what it is. You know? So I think there's lots of reasons why India, the Indian culture supports exactly what you say, that when you're in India, there isn't really much sexual desire. And what I find interesting, because I, I the, the, the two women, I, they're very beautiful, I find them very beautiful. And, but this is, uh, I feel a lot of beauty. Yeah. But I don't feel like I need to, get involved with them and sure, um, sure. yeah this is uh yeah, this is amazing yeah well I, I would say this is a rather healthy attitude you have what can i say i mean i i think the way that people relate in india uh, mostly i mean there's many horrible stories in recent times about not so nice ways that men have related to women. But generally speaking, there is a certain softness in the way Indian, well, Indian women are very, very soft and Indian men can also be very, very mm -hmm. soft. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so they, they meet in, in a somehow in, in more in the direction of self or no mind than they do in the way of uh, sex or porno. And I had a very, very, I had a great experience in the last uh, in the summer retreat in in Denia. There we had this uh, um, tantra weekend, and there was was a we had a session where um, one person was lying on a mattress and three or four were touching the other person. Right. Yeah. Right. And uh, this is, it's always very intense and very, very nice. But this time it was, was even, it was different. The first thing that was different that, um, that I knew exactly what, how to say, we, we have this, you, you can say, yes, I like this very much. You can say, no, I don't like this so much. Yeah, and normally I don't say no, yeah. But this time, I felt very, very, very. Sen I was very sensitive uh, on things. What was too strong, or what? And, and as several times said, "Oh no, don't do this." And after a time, I was completely gone. Yeah, I felt I was. Uh, uh, there was no. I don't know. Don't. I didn't feel any connection to my body. Or that my body was not uh, was somewhere else. It was complete quiet and emptiness. Right, right. Although I was naked, yeah, and it was you could say it was a bit a sexual uh, environment, but it wasn't. Right. Yeah, this right. was went very, yeah, very deep. Mm. I mean it. 
it's one of the kind of really tragic situations in society that being naked has become some kind of obscene sexual behavior or something. You know? Whereas in fact, running around uh, you know, in the sun on a beach naked would seem to be very natural to me. And then you go for a swim and then you lie on the sand again and blah, blah, blah. It's very natural, but there is such a, an, such a thing about it. The Christians over the last uh, hundred or so years have really done some nasty stuff around this, uh, this naturalness of being uh, naked, you know, that naked has become sort of obscene sexual act or something. It's a bit sad for humanity, I think. Good, so I think on that note, we can uh, finish tonight. Good, <laughs> thank you. Thank you for sharing, very nice. Okay, well, I can almost guarantee this is probably the last time for quite a few meetings that we're gonna talk about sex, Never mind. Okay, so next week, the subject will be completely different. But as I'm busy editing every day now, um, I'll find some juicy new text for next week. And as most of you maybe know, tomorrow night just happens to be the monthly um, live meeting, which we're starting now at Open Sky House. So those of you who live uh, within some time of Open Sky House, the meeting is at 8.15. And if you like, you can also come for dinner, which starts at seven o'clock. And if you want to come to dinner, you need to call the office and uh, make a reservation that you're coming for dinner. Otherwise, you just come directly to the meeting at 8.15. So we'll have a couple of hour meeting, a couple of hours of meeting, and uh, uh, we, we can continue what we've started tonight. So thank you very much. Thank you.